Corporate Transparency Act, it's called the CTA, and what you need to know. Hey, this is Laurel, and welcome back. We are talking about the Corporate Transparency Act, the hottest new conversation that is all over the internet. And for anyone who is living corporate life, has companies, you need to lean in and pay attention. There's a lot of discrepancy what's out there, so I'm bringing an expert to this conversation. We'll be doing a series of individual videos, but there will be around six of them. So you can always go up to the search bar and put Corporate Transparency Act. You can put beneficial ownership information, BOI inside of there, also get information. So uh, Scott, who is my partner in Generational Wealth Systems, will be talking about this. We'll be continuing to let you know information. I pray all the way until January 1, actually walk you through how to sign up and which links to go to and how to actually fill this out because it's a new document demanded, required by the SEC. There's three things Scott and I are going to talk about in this first video. We're going to talk about understanding the basics of the Corporate Transparency Act. Really, I want to, you know, I'm going to hear as much as you're hearing from Scott. Like, why is this even happening? We have our insights to it. We're going to talk about how do you ensure the compliance and the guidelines that are going to be required of you? And number three, the misconceptions and the mistakes that we're anticipating a lot of people to make. And anytime the government rolls out something new, like a Corporate Transparency Act, there's going to be a nice little bump in the road through 2024 and you all getting it right. But the fines or so jail time is on the other side. So I would pay attention. So let's go join Scott and I in an interview to talk about these three things in detail. While you're out there, make sure you're subscribing to our channel. Click the notification button. Be here every day. And at any time, you can always go to the comments if you want us to talk about something more or go to asklaurel.com, ask questions, make a request, and we'll be right back with you. So let's go jump into an interview I just did with Scott. So Scott Arden is with me, and we're going to talk about the Corporate Transparency Act. So Scott, let's just talk about understanding the issues. Uh, first of all, like what brought this up? Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, back in 2021, Congress enacted the Anti-Money Laundering Anti-Tax Evasion Act. And as part of this, the Corporate Transparency Act, effective as of January 1st, 2024, is going into effect. This is going to affect 32.6 million small business owners all throughout the United States, where we've got to basically turn over the beneficial ownership information. That basically means that, you know, anybody who is a, an owner within a company, whether it's an LLC or a corporation, is required to file this BOI. Interestingly enough, if you don't even have ownership in the company, but you have substantial control or decision-making capability within the company, you've actually got to be put on the beneficial ownership information report as well. So, <laughs> so yes, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, and really why they're doing this is they're trying to expose the illicit activities, whether that's terroristic uh, activities, whether that's drug activities, whatever is related to money laundering, they're really trying to just expose those, what will they call wrong actors or illicit actors, if you will. <laughs> well, and if you really look at it, I mean, with the amount of people who have been able to enter this open country now, like you and I are not fans of this, the best thing would be like, let's get our homeland security and borders back up and send them home. So in the meantime, us Americans, 32.6 million, I had no idea how big that was. So Scott, are there exemptions under the Corporate Transparency Act? There are a few exemptions. Uh, however, it does not relate to the small business owner. You know, if you're a public accounting firm, if you're a large publicly traded corporation, if you're a bank, they are exempt from having to file these reports. So again, we as the small business owners, we're being scrutinized uh, that they think that, you know, we're the criminals. We're the, you know, the ones that should be spotlighted and, and you know, a scope put on, right? But we're the backbone of America. And that's really what uh, it, it it's kind of bothersome, if you will. Well, and why do you think that the SEC is the one initiating this? Security and Exchange Commission is here to oversee securities. No one in a private, small LLC, S Corp, C Corp, including if the trust is the beneficiary, those are generational wealth moves, right? That's what Scott and I have been teaching for 20 years together. So why is the SEC, in your opinion, the agency that got either assigned or raised their hand to take this on? So it's actually not the Securities and Exchange Commission, it's the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which is part of the United States Department of Treasury. 
So again, they brought, uh, they, it, you know, it's part of, like I said, they, they want to make sure that they can see pretty much everything. Give us some tips. How do you ensure compliance and avoid any penalties? And I'm assuming January 1, this is going to open wide open and people are going to have a certain amount of time to get this done. Absolutely. Absolutely. So any businesses uh, filed uh, prior to January 1st, 2024 will have approximately one calendar year to get their reporting done through the portal that they're building. Now, you can't go right now and, and try and get the reports filed because the system is not in existence yet. It's still being tested out. However, we're going to see some things happen that, you know, over the course of that year, are their servers going to be able to handle 32.6 million business owners logging in at one time to get their beneficial ownership information filed? Now, right now, after 20, any company formed after January 1st, 2024, the law currently states that you have 30 days to file your beneficial ownership information. However, there is a proposal to increase that to 90 days, giving new business owners enough time to figure out how to get these reports filed. Right. So let's talk about the detailed information required in the beneficial ownership information report, like the legal names, addresses, obviously EIN, TIN numbers. What else do they have to report? Do they have to report revenue? Like, give us some uh, insight to that. So basically, it's all ownership information, meaning not just the business address, but the home address of the owners of these companies. So again, financial privacy, as we know it to the federal government, no longer exists. <laughs> so yes, the information is the name of the company, the address of the company, the EIN of the company. I don't believe they're asking for profit at this point. That might be something that they would uh, implement later or once they perfect the system. Then it goes down to, like I said, the owner's home addresses, their social security numbers, dates of birth, really everything is absolutely necessary to submit to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Interesting. And the penalties for noncompliance are? The penalties for noncompliance are a fine of $500 a day with a maximum $10,000 civil penalty and potentially two years imprisonment if you willfully not file the documents. <laughs> yeah. And what do you think the biggest misconceptions as you're hearing? And I know you went live a couple of weeks ago and uh, we talked about it. I said, well, we got to go live out here on my YouTube channel as well as all my other channels. What are you seeing as the biggest misconception? I'm I'm actually seeing a lot of people just not understanding the timing and in a panic, think they have to do it on January 1 or they're going to be fined right away. Yeah, uh, that's really the biggest thing is, you know, people, uh, business owners who've been in business for decades are scrambling, going, OK, I need to make sure that I'm staying compliant, that I'm getting this filed. And they're rushing to the, the financial crimes enforcement website to see if they can actually get the uh, report filed. And yes, it's really the timing. A lot of people think we've got the 90 days as a previous business owner. You don't. If you're a business owner who had the company filed prior to, like I said, Jan 1, 2024, you're going to have a full year to get that report in. So if you've got multiple different companies, don't panic. We still got a little bit of time, but it is absolutely imperative. All right. If you have any questions about this, go to Ask Laurel, A S K L O R A L, asklaurel.com. Ask a question, make a request. If uh, you need a strategy session, we will put a link in the description below. So uh, that'll get you signed up for a strategy session. You'll initially come into my team. They will screen, make sure that you are like worthy person to even have any of Scott's time because his time is precious. Both of our times are, all of your times are, but we want you to have a strategy session, really understand. And if you don't even know what corporate life is, I'm going to give you two tickets to our millionaire intensive that we do on a regular basis. You'll uh, see more about Scott and I and how we're going to teach how do you live corporate life? Because we do not want the CTA, right? The Corporate Transparency Act to scare you away from the very thing we teach. Do we think it's a violation of privacy and they're getting a little too close to the very reason why America has been the greatest country? Yeah, we do. But it is what it is. And again, we teach you how to stay in the line. So be here every day. If you, again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click the notification button. We're going to be back here tomorrow like we are every day. Talk to you then.